So I'm taking my electric car, my Nissan Leaf, to my parents' house, which is 200 miles away from Heartland. And I'm going to be taking my wife with me. And it's going to take a little bit of work to plan that out because my car, as far as I've ever gone with it, is about 105 miles on one charge. And since it's 200 miles, I need to charge at least once. And I would say it's going to be at least twice. Because when you go 105 miles, it's not on the freeway. It's on, you know, country roads and city streets because the, um, the car gets better mileage on city streets versus the freeway. I think the optimum speed efficiency wise is about 40 miles an hour. So it's going to be a long drive, but it'll be a challenge at the same time, which is good and bad, I guess. So uh, what I need to do here... is to show you what the route would look like with a gasoline powered vehicle. And it would be almost entirely on I-94, which is a 65 mile per hour freeway. With just the very end, there's a couple miles that would be just off the freeway. And in a gasoline powered vehicle, that entire drive would be just about three hours, maybe a little bit less. This map is from PlugShare.com and PlugShare is a website and a mobile app that shows all of the public charging stations. Blue charging stations are at homes that people opted to add to the map. Green stations are public and run at 220 volt and the orange ones are public stations that run at 480 volt and those orange ones are the quick chargers. So you can see in this map that Chicago is the area at the west side of southern Lake Michigan and then Milwaukee is the cluster of charging stations to the north. And what I just wanted to show you here is that how an electric car is really handy in urban areas because there's so many charging stations. But once you get out into a rural, rural area, there are slim to none as far as chargers. You can see west of uh, Chicago and Rockford, there's virtually no charging stations at all. So let me flip over to the map of Wisconsin now. And you'll see Milwaukee is in the lower right-hand corner. Madison is a little further to the west or to the left. And then my parents up northwest of there at the red dot. So you can see that after Madison, the charging stations drop off dramatically. And there's really not that many options. So if I animate the map here, you'll see the route that I hope to take with my electric car. I'm gonna take 94 all the way to Madison. That's a pretty easy shot. I'm gonna stop at the quick charger in Madison and then take back roads from there so I can get better mileage. Stop at the Glenville Timber Rights in Baraboo. And then if I need to, I can stop at one of the stations in Wisconsin Dells on the way up to my parents. And then from there, it's quite a long shot all the way to my parents at the red dot. And uh, you can see in Mauston, there's a quick charger, which is an orange. Unfortunately, I can't use that charger because it's a Tesla charger, which is a proprietary connection and only works with tes Tesla cars. So, even though it's in the exact spot that I could really use a charger and it's right by the freeway, I can't use it. I simply have to just drive past it. So that's unfortunate. So I'm going to have to call the Glenville Timberites in Baraboo 
and a couple other places just to see if I can use their charger just to verify everything. Cool. Uh, yeah, because we're thinking about bringing my car and making the strategic drive up there because I'll have to charge hey. at least twice. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And how long does it take to charge? A couple hours, doesn't it? Well, it depends on where I stop. If it's a quick charger, which there's one in Madison, then it's about 45 minutes probably. But the next stop in the Dells would be about four hours probably, three, four hours. Holy smokes. Yeah. But I kind of want to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Be an adventure. That's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Well, then from the Dells, you still need something, don't you? Yeah, I need to plan it out yet because it's you know roughly a hundred miles probably from there. Yeah. Mhm. Uh-huh. Maybe a little bit, maybe a hundred and five or so. Uh-huh. So that's about as far as I can go, and that's not yeah. on freeways. That's right. on side roads, so I'll have to yeah. charge somewhere else for a little while. Yeah. Right. Like Toma or someplace that's like yeah. three quarters of the way. Uh huh. Right, right. Check the casino. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Charge it for four hours. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad place to wait for it to charge. <laughs> yeah. Four, yeah. Four hours goes by in no time then. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, four hours already. We gotta go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not ready to go. It's right. only four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, kids. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but I mean, what happens if you don't make it and all of a sudden you're pulled over on the freeway with no electricity? Well, then you got to call the tow truck and have them tow you to tow you somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Hi, my name is Jeff, and I have a couple questions about your NEMA 1450 outlet that you have available there. A what now? You have a uh, outlet that's available for for charging electric vehicles. For charging, I'm, I'm not understanding what you're asking me yet. For charging electric cars. I don't have that. Okay. Uh, from what I understood from the website is that it, it says that you've got one of the 14-50 outlets, which are used no, for... No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Huh. All right. I know that's that's an outlet used for the RVs. Is that true? I, they're 50 amp or 30 amp. Right. Right. Okay. They're but, plug-ins, you know, that we have in our pedestals. Oh, because you have people that stay there? Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's the type of outlet I'm looking for. So what would it take to, you know, rent that for a little while, or how would that work? No, I, I don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to help you. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye. So apparently since I'm not an RV, he doesn't want to have any interest in letting me plug in, which I'd be willing to do for a fee. But apparently he's not, so uh doesn't sound like that one's going to be an option. Good afternoon, Glenville Timberlake. Hi, my name is Jeff, and I. it sounds like you have a charger for electric vehicles? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. I'd be interested in using that tomorrow night. Now, I don't know uh, if if I'd be able to use it after you're closed or not. Well, normally we lock it up after hours, but I suppose, how, how long do you need it? Or? Well, you know, it all kind of depends on my other stations I'm stopping at, but I would guess it would probably be Oh, around 6 or 7 p.m. So, okay. maybe around 7. Okay. Well, we can, we can just leave it, 
Yeah, okay, we can just leave it out. It's um, We've got it in a lockbox on the side of the building, and okay. then just, so you should be able to plug in. So, okay. yeah, no problem. Okay, that would be great. My, I guess my other option I could throw out there is I, I have my own level two charger I could bring with me, but I would need a, you know, like the 220 outlet. Oh, yeah, no, we don't have one of those. Okay. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. We'll leave it out there. Okay, well, that would be great because there's really nothing in between Madison and the Dells that I found. No, I know it. I so know it. That's, I, that's, why, that's why we put it in here. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate it. I wish yeah. I could... St- I wish I could stop in while you're open and check out your your uh, architecture. Yeah. What what have you what kind of car you got? I got the Leaf, the Nissan. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I can okay. optimally I can probably go up to about 105 miles is about the most. Yeah. You can get that much? Well, if I don't use the heat or oh, yeah. you know, if I go on back roads, freeway yeah. obviously takes a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've got a I've got a Focus. Oh, great. Electric. Yeah. Do you like it? Re- really like it. Yeah, I love it, yeah. Good. And yeah. can you go about 80 miles or so, or is it more? Yeah, well, it was up to 88 uh, yesterday or day before on the warm day, you know. It, it, it depends. God, I've never done a test, you know, actually, like, uh, to, to run it completely out to see how many miles that I get. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't know if I... I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> right. It's not like you can bring gas to your vehicle. You have to... Yeah, right. You right. know, you have to right. take care of it. But I, I've been really close to being out. I know I've had it where the percentage on the battery goes to zero and the the meter for miles. But I haven't <laughs> run out yet. It In my car, I don't know if yours has the same thing, but it'll actually go into a, kind of a lockdown where you can... You have to drive... It drives really slow and it has barely any power. But oh. I haven't experienced no. that yet, so I know I have a little bit of juice left at least. I've, I've, I've never gone below, I think the lowest I got was like, it was under 10%. I believe it was down around 5 4%, something like that. Okay. So, uh, no, I don't know if there's if there's like a reserve there or not. I haven't. I, right. You know, I just use mine for driving back and forth to work, so I haven't been too concerned about it. Right. But, but uh, I don't know, one of these days it'd be kind of, kind of fun to take it take a ride with it but i i don't know if my wife is that adventurous or not right luckily mine is this this will be an experience i've only yeah, gone yeah. i'm sorry no, go ahead as i say twice now i've gone outside of range we went down to chicago once and then we got a little more adventurous adventurous about a month ago we went to indiana just a little oh. ways into indiana and well, good good for you that's cool yeah but it's much easier going that direction because you have chicago and there's yeah, right, a, a few right. quick chargers, and there's a lot of level two ones. Yeah. So, but going north, it's, it's a lot different. Yeah, I know it. I know it. it I don't think there's anything. Boy, once you get the other, uh, there's one in Boston, but I believe that's a Tesla. Right. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, that's that's about all I can I can think of. My last resort would be to go to a campground. Because they have, you know, 50 yeah. amp circuits there, and I actually right. had my brother make me an adapter for the L630 connector to the 1450, so I could, okay. in theory, plug into any RV slot. But right. and actually shot an email to one of the people at the DNR today to see if they'd be willing to let me stop. I'm just, you know, getting all my ducks in a row in case I get stranded. Like at a like at a state park or something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, even if I had to rent the site for the night, which is probably only twenty bucks, I yeah. could I could at least fall back on that if I had to. But yeah, yeah, we'll see. Right, right. We'll see. So, so when you go on these trips, you you plan on it's going to take you a while, huh? Because yeah, you got to you got to plan on your charging time. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what's your name? My name is Les. So, yeah. Les. Les. Okay, I'm Jeff. So, well, I, I really okay, appreciate Jeff. it. You're welcome. And then maybe one day when you're open, I'll stop in. I can show you the leaf. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll show you some timber frames. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Les. You bet. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Well, that one much better. Uh, I think it helps that there's a EV owner that I just talked to. Definitely knows what he's talking about. Is more apt to let me charge, you know, compared to the RV resort or 
sales place that I called the Bucks Crossing. So, all right, well, at least I have one option it's set in stone, and it doesn't sound like it's going to be occupied because no one really knows about it, and it's supposedly locked after hours anyway. So I think I'm good to go. We're going to do a little more research, and I'll be back. It is 5.25 p.m. So we just got our start. It's 536 now and we're on the freeway going 62 miles an hour on a 65 mile an hour freeway lower the speed better the mileage of course so this is the first leg and we're going to be going on the freeway the entire way it's about 53 miles I think and this is probably going to be the least stressful because I know we can make it there and there's a quick charger waiting for us, which is the 480 volt DC charger, which should get us to 80% within 30 minutes or less. And then I don't know, I'll have to figure out if we'll want to charge 100% or not, but we probably will just for safety's sake. And that'll probably take an hour or so total. So we're heading straight west, and of course there's a pretty strong west wind, so That'll affect us a little bit, but not too bad, I don't think. And I don't expect to pass any cars. <laughs> we haven't yet, and I'm sure we won't. I can't tell yet if the charger is open, so that's our next gamble. But we'll find out here in a second. Uh, I don't see any cars, I don't think. It's open. We'll have to see if it's working. All right, so I just need to scan my card if I remember. Accepted, you are allowed to access this charger. That's the first step. Press start button. This is a big, uh, big plug here because this is a 480 volt DC power. So this is major, major power. You don't see very many of these. I think there's only a couple in the state of Wisconsin. It's actually hard to get these things in. There we go. Okay, now I don't think it's detecting the charger yet. Press the start button. Now it's working. I don't know what happened, if it timed out or what. Yeah, you can see on the dash there that it's charging. And that's kind of a three light meter. So the first one on the left, if that's lit, it means it's somewhat charged. And then second one's blinking, so it's you know roughly a third, uh, two thirds charged. And then once it gets to that third light, it'll be about two thirds minimum charged. So yeah, we're at 28% and we'll check back. We're already at 29%, so this thing flies. So we'll check back in a little bit and see how it's going. So 
so I just wanted to show you my app here my phone app to show you that I can communicate with my car and this is Nissan's official app so with this app I can check charging status check the level of my battery and I can start charging stop charging from here I can also turn on climate control turn it off I can set a timer for climate control and that's really about it but before you do anything it's kind of a it's not a real-time communication I need to kind of a send a request and then I get re, uh, get a response so I just need to send a request for an update and that usually takes less than a minute okay it's been updated so now you can see we're at 49 miles remaining on our our battery and that we when we got here we we're at 28 percent i think so that's about it okay so charging is complete it took no, it doesn't say how long it took but it's 720 so it wasn't very long there we go that's it on to the next stop So we left the first stop in Madison uh, a little while ago. It's 7.41 now. And GPS had me go in a couple crazy directions, but only charged us a mile or so. But we're back on track and we're down to 87%. And we'll definitely have plenty of juice to get to the next stop because that's only 43 and a half minus a few now so about 40 miles and getting dark out this road is definitely not the freeway uh, it was 40 miles an hour now it's up to 55 so that's not too bad it won't affect us too bad and we just have to hope the charging station at the Glenville timber rights is gonna work out fine it should talk to the guy again today so we'll put all our eggs in that basket. I do have a plan B if we need to, but it's a little further down the road. So that is it for now. So it's uh, 8.36, we're just coming up on the second charge stop, which is the, forget the first word, the timber right, something timber rights. And we're at 45%. So I knew this wouldn't be that far of a distance. It was 43 and a half miles, but um, Again, this is the one I called on earlier, and it should be all unlocked for me. They usually lock it up at night, but they're going to leave it unlocked for me this weekend, so that's awesome. And uh, I just wanted to say as well that one of the reasons I chose this trip this time of year versus winter is because heat and air conditioning take so much extra power to use that we would be freezing to death if this was uh, a winter because the next stop for sure we'll have to not use any heat because that's going to be a dicey situation okay so here's the timber place i just gotta find 
where the charger is. I think he said it was by the main parking lot. Here it is. Yeah, looks like this is it. Piece of cake. So yeah, apparently they usually lock up the that cord in there. So, all right, let's charge it up. All right, let's see if this works here. Lots of cord. Oh, they put the charger inside. That's really smart. That way the charger is protected. They don't have to buy a, a waterproof or water resistant charger and nobody can steal it. So I'll plug it in, see if we get some blue lights on the dash. There we go. We're charging. Now it's time to find some dinner. So we're at the timber rights. We're just about done charging. We're at 93% probably right now. We're, it's just after midnight now, so we've been on the road for six and a half hours. Uh, in a normal car, the whole trip would take three, so definitely much longer already. We stopped and had dinner, or took a walk and had dinner. It was about a mile and a half away and we took a little nap here for half hour while it charged a little more it's starting to get cold out so we're going to get on the move we're going to try to stop at the well there's a campground on the way that should have charging abilities it's about 70 miles so we'll try that one and worst case we can go to the next one down the road it's a little further so we're gonna give that a shot and see what happens. All right, so I found a charger. Just gotta put together the cable. It's an adapter. So this end should plug in to this wall outlet over here. I just hope that it's turned on. We'll soon find out. Oh, forgot to pop this. That's not good. <coughs> not turned on. Crap. And the breaker's on here. So that means it's probably turned off at the head. We don't have it in all the way.
There we go. Still nothing. Is there anything not connected here? No. It's all connected. Is there any switch? No. This only fits one way. And it beeped the one time. So I'm sure it's working. Or, you know. And that would be lit up already. Right. So if I had power. Not working. Hmm. Well, I could try the 110 just to see if that works. Sure. Just plug in anything. Oh, yeah, I could do that too. I could just get a... Uh, get a phone... plug. Nothing. So they must turn them off centrally somehow. That sucks. All right, there goes that idea. Okay, so a little update here since our failed stop at an undisclosed private campground that had the service shut off to the power pole. We stopped at a gas station just on the street to go to plan to look to research plan B and we just plugged in at the gas station on the 110 outlet for I don't know, five minutes or so. Gave us like an extra mile as we looked at our map and figured we'd go to plan B, which is to a state campground. And I previously researched it and they do have the 14-50 outlets, which are used for RVs. It's a 220 outlet or 208 volt, one of the two. So. We drove over there and, you know, about 40 miles an hour trying to use as little power as possible. And we're lucky we did that because our meter went to zero on the miles remaining. And then the battery percentage meter once that gets to 7% or so, it goes to zero as well. Well, it just blanks out. It doesn't really say zero. And I think that's to tell you that it's probably not 100% accurate anymore at that point. And I've seen that before a couple times. So we we're basically running on fumes and uh, we got pretty close to the, uh, the campground and 
and I've read about this, I never experienced this until just now, but the car went into a self activated power saving mode which pretty much shuts down a lot of the power and you can only go so fast and it disables you know like uh, traction control things like that so we're probably a quarter mile from the entrance to the campground when that happened so we roll into the campground and since it's 2 30 in the morning there's nobody around luckily we on the way here we researched for electric sites and we found out that the lower numbered ones so luckily the first spot we saw was camp site number two it said electric so we wheeled the car in there and long story short we're charging at 200 volts right now and 50 amps and we're last i checked we're at two miles now on the meter so we're gonna take a little nap it's what is it now 2.40 a.m. So as you can see, it's a little bit of daylight out. We char finished charging at the campground. Well, we got up to about 50 five percent I think it was and we only had to go 20 more miles to get to my parents so we wanted to get a little extra because of the fiasco the time before so we had a little nap and it got down to 28 degrees but we didn't get busted for squattering at somebody's campsite well it wasn't taken but we didn't officially rent it out but we're about here it's 228 miles total and we're at 14 percent battery right now all right so it is now sunday night we Spent a day at my parents, and that went well. And charged at their house on the 110 outlet. It took probably 20 hours or so, but we got it all charged up. Left uh, 1.30 on Sunday afternoon. No, 12.30, Sunday afternoon. And we, I thought it would go much easier just because we left there on a full charge, just the way the stops would work out. So I didn't even intend on recording anything but um, I'll sum it up now. So we stopped at the st same state park that we went to on the way up, the last stop on the way up. So it was first stop on the way down. We were at about 65% when we got there. So we charged up and it took uh, a couple hours. We were there. It was chilly, but 45, so it wasn't terrible. Um, and I researched a little bit while we were waiting for it to charge and I wanted to charge at the the place in the Dells the Sand Drift Resort which we haven't stopped at yet and I noticed on the PlugShare website that they had an updated note in there saying that the 1450 charge port is out for a week because they're doing some upgrades on their system so pretty much ruled that stop out so then the uh, fallback to that is to go to Baraboo, which is where we stopped on the way up. But that's pretty much exactly at the farthest range I could go. So I knew we had to go to 100% charge at the state park. So we did that, and that's why it took a while, even from 65% charge to get to 100. So we did that, and drove slow i drove about 43 miles per hour on a 55 mile an hour road totally side sidetracked the freeway uh didn't turn the headlights on which i normally have on during the day anyways just for safety's sake but left the lights off and didn't even turn the radio on just because i knew it would be a stretch and long story short we got about two and a half miles from our charging stop in baraboo 
and we went down to the lockdown mode where we were pretty much out of power while we were going up a steep hill again about two and a half miles from our destination so i literally pulled in the first driveway i saw after that lockdown mode went on and it was a house and i saw a couple lights on so i was hoping somebody was home knocked on the door guy answered don his name is i explained the situation to him he was pretty humble and let me charge outside of his garage on the 110 outlet and we stayed there for uh, i think it was about an hour probably an hour and 10 minutes and when we left his house we were still at zero percent battery and zero percent on miles just because we we're on the 110 outlet and it takes so long to charge so i knew it was going to be tight just to get that last two and a half miles to baraboo our charge station there at the woodwright place so we it was literally pretty much all downhill to get there so we lucked out we snuck in and we charged and we walked the mile and a half to the local restaurant again and we had dinner there spent about two hours there no three hours and we just got back we walked back in the rain mile and a half and just got back in the car we're we're at 55 percent so we should be good enough to get to madison now and that's where the quick charger is and after that we should be able to go home within an hour or so so it's probably about two two and a half hours yet so we'll be home one or two a.m hopefully so it's been a long day almost as long as the way up which i didn't expect so it's unfortunate but we'll make it <laughs>